question over the church questions chain. Do you expect that from Big Z? No, not at all. I don't think anyone expected that, but it's probably um, just an eruption of what all he, he's been through in terms of being patient. Um, obviously having some stick to it to, to to go through this whole process he's been through, and then just to finally have the opportunity to get out on the floor was just probably an eruption of that. And uh, He made some shots, and... You know, after that, it was kind of like shooting in an ocean. So it's good for him, happy for him, really happy for him. He finally got the chance to uh, put the uniform on and not actually just go through warm-ups. He actually uh, got an opportunity to get out there and play. So happy for him. What was the benches? I can, we can see the players, but the guys on the bench, what was their reaction to him coming? The same thing. I mean, they 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 share his, you know, they obviously sympathetic to what all he's been through and um, our, our team is really tight knit. They care about each other. And so to see him do that, uh, they went crazy. Uh, and the, the more importantly, the, the two that probably was more excited, mostly excited for him was Ugo and Aaron. So that shows you uh, what we have in our locker room. We knew, we knew he was shooting free, but did he have the green light before he took that first? Uh, <laughs> no, no I, I think all that just happened throughout the course of the game. None of that was planned for him to, to shoot threes. Like, you know, we have a, a team, and I, I know you guys have heard it at nauseam, Coach, say that guys that all can dribble pass and shoot. Aaron can shoot threes. He can shoot threes. I mean, it's like, but we got enough three-point shooters, you know. Uh, we're one of the top five in the country in three-point shooting percentages, so. We don't necessarily need another person shooting threes. It just so happened that that was where he was at on the floor, and, and the ball found him, and he was wide open. They didn't know, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a scout report on him. You know, no one does, and no one and now, you know. So uh, he was just kind of like in the right place at the right time. He was open. They didn't guard him. They didn't know him, and then open that open that wide open. Most college players can make a shot. It's like horse, right? So he had some horse shots, and he made them. We'll figure it out, Coach Kyle. We'll figure it out because you got to think about it. We've essentially coached five different teams this season already, right? We coached one team that was without Ugo and Aaron, right? And we were playing Trey at the five, and uh, that was with the Duke at that time. Then the second team uh, we had to coach, of course, is now you implement Aaron, and that's a, a totally different thing. You got to figure out how to play, how to play with him and so on and so forth. And then uh, having a do out, that's a different team, now that we implement Aaron, and then now that you have no do, you implement Z, that's four, five teams. And now we're gonna possibly bring back a do, that's another team. So uh, Coach has done an unbelievable job of, um, you know, with the moving pieces, who's in, who's out, and uh, figuring it out. And so I, he, he He's the best at it for a reason, so he'll figure it out. There's only one game, but what do you like about having Big Z out there with one of Aaron and Hugo kind of on both sides of the floor? Um, hopefully it gives us some shot blocking. Uh, it makes us a better rebounding team. And our guys are skilled, so in terms of offensively, uh, it's just about moving the pieces around and making sure we have the pieces set on the table where we want them at. But it should help us better defensively in terms of rim protection. Um, the fact that um, Z and Aaron are, are, are good shooters, it should keep the floor space. It should keep the fluidity of what we're trying to do in terms of just play random. Uh, I don't think that that will stop any of that. But um, I think having them is a, a good problem to have. I mean. Uh, we like this group. They like each other. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue to grow. We'll continue to figure different things out. Again, this is another team. So it's going to take a little time for us to completely figure all of this stuff out. And then if we get a chance to add a dude, then he's been really good for us at the beginning of the season when he was playing. So we got to figure those things out. South Carolina had a nice win over the weekend. What can you tell us about this matchup? They're playing good right now. Um, 
at three and two in our league. Uh, I think they're they have a lot of confidence. Like winning produces confidence, and the fact that they're they're winning, they have a lot of confidence. They're playing well. Uh, they don't beat themselves. Um, they are 347th, I think, in pace of play. So, you know, this is like a boxing match. You know, a clash of two different styles. We want to play ultra fast. I won't, I won't say that they want to walk it up at a snail's place, but they they want to uh, milk the clock a little bit and, and, and probably get an, a, a shot attempt up into the lower half of the shot clock, and we want to score in the first seven seconds of the shot clock. So uh, I think we have to get the game in our pace, and I'm going to give you uh, one of my terminologies, keep the irrelevant guys irrelevant and make sure that we do a good job of – uh, their two main guys, which is B.J. Mack and, and Michi. We've got to do a good job on those two. Now that you guys have been through a couple of road battles this season, just where do you feel the team's at in terms of coming into a hostile environment? We're yeah. still getting better um, at that. Um, a lot of our guys don't have a lot of experience of what it is like to play on the road uh, in a Kentucky uniform. Um, it's a little different from any other game on the road. When Kentucky comes in town, there's just like a little bit of different energy. Um, most of the time, there's some type of event, some type of T-shirt, pom-poms, hats, hot dogs. You know, <laughs> there's an event. You know, so we, our guys are getting used to that. Not there yet. Um, this is a big week for us because we got two back-to-back -back on the road. So um, we got to be world warriors and what we like to say, go and get some road kill. You guys going off that? Any extra emphasis or things you're working on with the guys to get them comfortable for, as you mentioned, a big week with you? Coach does a good job of putting them in the right mind space. We talk about it. Um, if it wasn't post-COVID and probably so cold all over the country, Tent City, you know, we like to let them see that so they can understand the, um, what we're in for in terms of going on the road and people sleeping out in tents and, you know, for, to watch the Kentucky game. But, you know, it's a big game for a reason. You know, most of the time it's a big game because – we're a part of it. What, with back to Z for a minute, what, what's next for him? What, what does he need to work on? I mean, he's got to work on a lot. He hasn't played. He only played one game. He don't. He doesn't really completely understand what we're doing. Um, so he's he's got a lot to to catch up too quick. But Z is a very high intelligent basketball player. Um, so we don't think that it'll be a slow process in terms of him learning what we do, what we're doing, what we're trying to get accomplished offensively and defensively, we think that he'll be able to pick it up really rather quickly. But he but he's 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 got a lot to learn. But um he's been in our practices so he's not that far off. Now it's just a little different when you're available and, and you're going in. So you gotta be attentive to the the scout and be assignment sound and understand um what we want to do in ball screens and, and and things of that nature. But he'll be fine. Trey had a really good game. How much does having all three of those guys open up things for him to shoot the ball more? Um, uh, I'm not sure if if that affects Trey. Trey, we just want Trey to be more aggressive offensively, and and when he does that, we're 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 a better team. Uh, we are uh, we all want for Trey to take his opportunities, but Trey is is unselfish. Uh, he likes to to pass and celebrate others and. We're on him about sometimes you got to know when to be selfish. And so uh, he's going to pick his spots. Trey is a veteran. He understands the game at a high level. Um, he knows when to pick his spots, when not to pick his spots. Uh, he knows when guys need picked up. He knows when he needs to try and get someone else a shot. He's like a point forward for us. We kind of run a lot of offense through Trey. So he has the ability to either shoot it, score it, get somebody else involved. He's like a, a traffic cop out there. I don't know if you see him telling guys when to cut, when to go through, do this, do that. He's our he's our other primary or I could say secondary ball handler. So we trust Trey a lot. Kind of to piggyback off that, I don't know if this was asked already, but um, Trey's been playing well. Obviously, Big Z had a huge night, but a guy that's really been ascending these last couple games is DJ Wagner. Maybe struggled, some people might say, in the, no. the season. Talk a little bit about his game the last couple of weeks. DJ is DJ Wagner. He's, he's, I mean, say struggled. I don't know because he didn't play up to his level in the Kansas game. Everybody thinks he struggled. We we never doubted DJ Wagner. Um, 
I would say in the last eight games, he's probably playing better than any guard in the country um, and consistently. Um, it's a long season, you know. It's a long season. Uh, I think there was a him getting familiar with everybody, when, when to pick his spots, what, how to get everybody involved and still feed, set the table, feed everybody, and then obviously take a plate for myself and eat. I mean, I think he had to kind of go, go through that a little bit and probably the toughest kid on our team from a mental standpoint. Uh, very strong-minded. Uh, we never doubted would he ever catch a groove and get in a rhythm in terms of him playing at a high level and um, being a good basketball player for us because his mind is in the right place. Most of the time when your mind is right, your game is right. He's got the right spirit, so we wasn't concerned about him um, being a good basketball player for us and obviously not playing up to whoever those naysayers' capabilities are, but for what our team needs, he's all about that. So and now with him you know, playing as most people expected, Trey playing well, Antonio playing well, is everyone playing well. A lot of people, uh, maybe in the media, have been saying that you guys have the highest ceiling in the country. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure always with Kentucky, uh, but based on maybe some of the teams in the last couple of years, is there maybe added pressure knowing that this might be one of the best teams Coach Cal might ever have? If there's added pressure playing at Kentucky and coaching at Kentucky, wow. <laughs> added pressure like I don't know if there's added pressure it is what it is like um, we like our team man we got a long way to go we uh, we obviously can get better in a lot of different areas we're not at our peak right now we don't want to be at our peak right now we 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 understand the process um, I guess you know people are gonna say the ceiling people are gonna talk about uh, obviously the individual parts of this team um, and we like the collective of our team, but what goes on in our locker room and stuff that we say in our locker room, what we think we can do with this team, we'll just keep it there as a bulletin board for us to continue to strive for something great. DJ's obviously an example of many freshmen who have helped power this team to be so efficient offensively. What do you think that says about the continued you know, development that you guys have in Kentucky, that so many young players can come in here right away and, and help make you guys one of the best teams in the country? Um, the work, you know, we got guys that that there's a underlining competition of who's in the gym and who's in the gym the most, who's putting up the most shots and who's working on that craft the most. As they continue to get better, obviously our team gets better. So I think Coach Cal has always been about that. Like, as you as an individual continue to get better and grow in your game, then that obviously bleeds into the success of our team. So, um that's why there was never a doubt in our minds um, about DJ because we see the work that he puts in, the constant work that he puts in. Um, we see where he at in between the years. And again, when those things connect, it's like it'll eventually happen. And, you know, he's, he's, he's in a good space right now. And of course, he still can grow and he still can get better. And that's the fun part about this, right? Like the fun part about all of this in terms of this team we can, we probably can, you know, get a little better and do something. We, who knows, you know. You're obviously on the, the road recruiting a lot. I mean, how much does that message of coming to Kentucky, having to earn your spot, earn your playing time, still sort of resonate with, with kids out there and, and make it a, this appealing destination? That's just been how it's been here, and that's been Coach Kyle's message. You, you know, nothing is given; everything is earned. You gotta obviously come take what you want, and we're transparent with that throughout the, you know, recruiting process. Um, I was transparent with that with, with Rob. I was transparent with that with DJ. And of course, those messages come from Coach Cal. And when I'm out recruiting those guys, I, I deliver those messages. And so I delivered those messages to DJ and I delivered that message to Rob. And those guys understood it and they were all in. And so once you, you know, get guys locked in and they're all in and they, they understand the assignment, right? It, 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 it makes it easier. Um, got a little loose, you know, instead of putting our, keeping our foot on the neck, so to speak, or keeping our foot on the gas. And uh, we got a little loose at the end, and, and, and we can't do that. Obviously, we had some unquestionable turnovers, and then uh, those guys were still fighting. 
Um, so we can't do that. You know, we got to be better at closing the game out and closing teams out when we got them down with the with the league and um, keeping them down and not giving them breathing room to get back into the, the, the game. And so, again, like I said, we, 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 we're not where we need to be right now. Um, we like our team. We have a good group of group of guys in our locker room and continuing to, to get better and continuing to have those things to get better at is what drives us. And so we're having fun with this, man. And, um, you know, we're not where we need to be right now. Um, we got some things we need to get better at defensively, uh, some things we need to get better at offensively, and finishing games is a, is a big part of it. To piggyback off that, um, kind of, you know, laying back, is that something you've maybe seen from these guys before? You talked about, you know, DJ and some other guys who are, are real sharp in between the years um, and have kind of that killer mentality. So is this just maybe a one-off thing? Cause, you know, it's just a one-off thing. This is this, this is uh, won't be anything consistent. I think that that was a one-off thing. There was a, I mean, you know, having Z back, there was a big celebration. There was a big high. And then, you know, um, we kind of, let our foot off the gas a little bit and kind of got a little loose and you can't get loose at the end of the game. You got to finish the game off. Like Georgia's a, Georgia's a good team. Uh, they're, they're, they're playing really good basketball. And so uh, we understood that. And so that's why we were tentative to do what we did to make sure we take care of business early and, and, and not give them any hope. Um, but then obviously at the end of the game, you saw us get a little lackadaisical. We got a little loose and we can't do that.